Okay, we're back. Uh, welcome back. As we uh, mentioned before our break, we have a discussion uh, in our first segment with ASR BSI, uh, and we're going to speak about the big news uh, surrounding the sugar industry right now, uh, which is the delay of the sugar crop. The sugar crop was scheduled to begin yesterday. Uh, we're two days now, uh, technically uh, delayed in terms of the sugar crop and we have with us Mark McLachlan, uh, he's the uh, VP of International Relations at ASR BSI and Mr. Sean Chavaria, he is the Director of Finance uh, over there at ASR BSI. Uh, Mr. Mark, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. I, yeah. I, I want to start perhaps with uh, one of the obvious questions as we get straight into this the discussion which is uh what is holding asr bsi back from uh gazetting the sugar crop that the this the, the opening of the sugar crop that tends to be that appears to be one of the main issues at hand why not just gazette this uh opening and get the ball rolling well firstly a uh, very good morning uh, paul and marlene and uh, thank you very much for having us on the show this morning um and you know uh, 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 merry christmas to to all your listeners and i was listening to you talking about change and hopefully people won't change their uh, their eating habits too much over christmas as we have <laughs> a lot of sugar to sell but um uh, no, yeah, well, really, we're the wrong people to ask because, um, uh, you know, basically we were all set to start the crop. The boilers started, um, everything's working, um, and uh, we had agreed with all four cane farmer associations that we would start the crop on the 20th of December and yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, we know it's important to get cracking because um, we want to make sure that we finish the crop in good time before... Uh, the poor weather closes in and that has a negative impact for farmers and and for and for uh, the miller um however you know uh following the the meeting that we had with all four associations on the 16th of december the following day the uh, sicb chairman wrote a letter saying that well he had not yet gazetted the um the start of crop and under the sugar act that's a requirement for the shop for the crop to get started so uh, while we're feeling festive we're also feeling frustrated right now because um, due to what we would think is a bit of a technicality, um, we're, we're unable to actually move the grinding season forward. Um, you know, we've written to, to the SICB chairman. I think uh, a number of the other associations have also written to him asking what's going on and why, can't, why we can't start the crop. Uh, and we're hoping that that, you know, will be resolved in the very, in a very few days time, because uh, frankly, th this is wasting time. It's been clearly made clear by everyone, including the government, that they want this crop to, to proceed. Yeah. There's no reason for it to be interrupted, but um, that, that's that's basically what's happened. Um, Can I just uh, which get some, some clarification there, Mac, before we, we go any further? Um, the meeting that took place with ASR and the other Cane Farmers Association, now with BSCFA, where you agreed on a start date of the 20th, was there a representative of uh, the Sugar Industry Control Board present? Yeah, and just to correct that, uh, all four associations were present. There were okay. two meetings, one on the 8th of December when the, the tentative crop start of 20th was agreed by everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the chair, chairman of the SICB was present for that and, and agreed also. Um, and then the, the, the next one was on, on the 16th December where, again, all four associations were represented and the chairman of the SICB. Uh, and throughout, you know, uh, his, his role in this, it, it's up to the millers and the farmers to agree the start date and then uh for for the SICB basically to rubber stamp that and and to be honest with you I mean that that's that that's sort of sticking to the letter of the law that's not yes. been the way it, no. it's it's been managed in previous years uh that this is this is very much using a technicality to prevent the start of crop of course so you you pointed out something really important there that the decision on the start of the crop is one that is made collectively between the farmers and the millers and then once that date is decided, the SICB then uh, uh, publishes that date in the Gazette, and then you move forward. So you were informed after deciding that you would start the crop on the 20th um, at the 11th hour that it had not been gazetted. And in fact, you could not start 
the crop uh, on Monday. Now, have you had any conversations as to why? Have they explicitly stated that because one association is not on board uh, with starting the crop, that that is why this has happened, why you've been stalled from starting? Well, I mean, I've seen the same media uh, that other people will have seen uh, about this. Um, and uh, the, the point I just want to make clear is, is that this is really more, more um, an industry technical decision rather than politics. Um, there is, is, you know, is the mill ready? Yes, it is. Uh, is, the, is the weather uh, performing so that we can get started? Yes, it is. Uh, is it in everyone's interest to start the crop? Yes, it is. Does everyone have a, um, a, a, a an agreement to deliver cane to the mill? Yes, everybody does. Um, so, you know, really um, to, to to decide at the last minute is not only undermining uh, uh, ourselves as Miller, but and, and obviously uh, the cane farmer associations, but also also ordinary farmers, because uh, many, many farmers, uh, even farmers from BSEFA would, would like to get on with the crop. There's really no reason for not doing so. So, um, look, we, we've written, uh, we've explained in, in our, well, the, our legal team have written to, to explain that uh, having looked at this quite carefully, they, they don't see any legal obstacle for starting the crop and they think that it should begin. And so what we're hoping is that in the next, uh, you know, re reasonably short period of time that there, there will be uh, an agreement to get started. We would suggest immediately after Christmas now, and that would make sense for everybody. But, you know, it's not, it's not our business to... Um, um to you know to to to, to contravene things that, that that are being stated by other other industry um uh, institutions etc on the other hand i think that we do have to have a good hard think about the role of uh institutions that that can come in and, and impact private sector business uh, in this way um because i think that is a concern and i, I think you know what we need to have a think about is how that how that fits with with our rights to to run a business uh, in Belize. So, I mean, that that's, these are some of the thoughts going through our minds at the moment. Look, looking at the prominent matter of contention uh, leading up to this delay, which is the uh, impasse between the sugar mill and uh, the BSCFA. My question is: Is it practical? Is it uh, does it make sense to begin the crop? with uh, an agreement between the mill and BSCFA that will expire in mid-January because then the question, obvious question after that is what happens then when that expires? I think it's a fair question, Paul. Um, you know, we're, we've gone out of our way to uh, you know, reach out to BSCFA to, to present some ideas that we think would help meet their concerns. Their, their concerns, uh, as um, passed to us, uh, are over transparency of the current um, value share agreement. And uh, we've looked at other ways in which that can be resolved. We, we had what I thought, you know, sounded like quite a constructive beginning to that meeting uh, a week or so back. Uh, with the BSCFA, but unfortunately at the end of it, they read a prepared statement prepared before the meeting had started, um, basically saying that, you know, they uh, they weren't prepared to start a crop without um, an interim agreement uh, moving on through the crop. We, we don't see any point in there being an interim agreement um, when we have, you know, the opportunity now to, to work on a long-term agreement. And we've got time to do that if both sides are prepared to come to the table in, in good faith. Um, during that meeting, uh, and we, we've always made it very clear that, look, that, that, that for, from our position, this is not politics. It's not posturing. This is about business. It's about, you know, what's affordable for the business at the moment and how we can move forward together. We have always been 100% uh, supportive of Belize. We've invested a lot of money here um, and we've been 100% supportive of trying to improve the uh, livelihoods of all our stakeholders and, and our mission has always been to uh, grow the pie so that everybody gets uh, a larger share. Um, and we've said uh, all along due to the investments we've made due to the long term debt that we have at the mill at the moment that we're not in a position where we would be able to countenance um, giving more money from the mill to, to farmers. But we're, we're prepared to look at uh, things that, you know, that they don't like within the contract quite happily. Um, and have, have tried to do that. Uh, but it became very clear from that last meeting that really the main intention was to get more value 
from the mill. Um, and that's something that, that is simply not possible at the moment for, for business reasons, uh, for economic reasons. Um, I would also just add that, you know, this is not looking like such a bad season um, for all concerned. Um, the first cane price estimate that's gone to the farmers is 9% higher than the first price estimate last year. So, you know, 9% right pay rise, if you like. And I know in Belize, a lot of people have struggled um, having to take pay cuts. I mean, this is this is a significant improvement, partly because of changes in global sugar values, but equally because of the investments that we've made in added value sugars and also um, greater efficiency through through Big Creek Port and its development. So we're working for farmers. We're working hard for them. I, I would say the majority of farmers want to get on, want to move forward with this uh, business. No, no real reason for not doing so. So I think let's do that. Let's meet up. Let's talk about the long term and, and what everybody wants. Let's come to an understanding um, and, and get moving. That's that's my message. You know, you, you said earlier um, that there are members of the BSCFA that want the crop to start as well. Do you want to explain that further? Because the message from the executive is clear that they mm. want an agreement before moving forward. Yeah, I, I, you know, all I'm telling you is what's been happening. We've been getting calls from BSUFA farmers saying that, you know, that they, they really want to move forward. Um, it would be interesting if, you know, if the crop were allowed to begin, because then I think we'd see, you know, who wants to come and, and, and who doesn't, because everyone has a right to deliver their cane. Mm. But uh, at the moment, uh, pending, pending further legal action on this, um, our hands are somewhat tied. Uh, but we hope for not too much longer because it really is not in anybody's interest for this crop to be stalled. It really isn't. You know, we had this in 2014. We had it in 2015 over the bag ass issue where we had late starts to the crop um, on, on for, for two consecutive years that put the whole crop cycle out uh, for years after that. Um, and everybody lost. The mill lost. The farmers lost. Uh, I find it very frustrating and disappointing that here we are in 2022, discussing the same issues, um, such as, you know, value of bag ass and, and issues like that, which have really been long settled. So, um, look, I just Has hope- Has there been sense any change in, in revenue um, as to what you earned for bag ass seven years ago at the start of this agreement to now? Per perhaps I could jump in there, um, yes. Mac, yeah. <laughs> Hi, morning, morning, Paul, morning. Morning, morning, morning Sean. Hi. Well, uh, to that question, uh, uh, Marlene, the answer is no. Not, nothing has changed. Uh, Belfogen had a, has a 15-year uh, for purchase agreement, uh, which uh, expires at the end of 2024. The tariff structure is the same. And at the time, in 2013 and 2014, we explained to the BSEFA that the tariff structure of Belfogen did not include a cost related to bagasse. Mm -hmm. so, they, it was never contemplated that they would be assigned a value for bagash, which would have to be part of the tariff, which BL pays and therefore passes on to the consumer. So when Belfagen and B, or BSI agreed to uh, make this payment for bagash uh, in 2014, it did it out of its own pocket. So it's not a cost that is recovered uh, uh, from BEL. It's one that is paid uh, uh, strictly by BSI. And that hasn't changed today. And in fact, we, we offered the BSEFA uh, during the discussions to see uh, an updated uh, financial statements for Belkogen to prove the point that uh, Belkogen still has accumulated losses. Uh, they, we are not earning, we're not earning, we're not receiving a, a higher tariff. We're earning uh, same in revenues. In fact, our, our revenues um, have declined because the amount of power uh, we're, we're using for other projects, for example, this water cooling project, is taking more power so there is less that we will be selling to the grid so you're so selling less not, energy now so we're selling less energy now right and 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 the last position uh, is the same and so we we can't uh, afford to pay any more for bagash and if they insist on having it linked to the tariff that's really something that is not within our gift it has to go to uh, bel and ultimately the public utilities commission for them to uh, review uh, and approve and have it become a part of the tariff, which will ultimately, uh, you know, roll up into the tariff uh, structure for BEL that, uh, you know, is the cost of power and passes on to the consumer. So where, where perhaps is the breakdown of communication there then? Because what I understand the association sees 
is the $145 million that uh, the uh, mill has made on uh, cogeneration. And seeing that big number, I would imagine it prompts you to think, all right, we get 48 cents on per ton uh, we, on on the where 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 is the bigger share for us when to them it appears as if the the mill is making a whole lot of money on energy because you're probably seeing it in one context paul right they're just looking at uh what you're selling uh and earning from the grid but not the cost associated with you know producing that energy uh, your equipment, all your operating costs. And that's why we offered to share the financial statements of Belkogen for them to see the overall picture. You know, um, it's just like us saying, well, you know, over the past uh, 10 years, we've uh, paid over uh, half a billion dollars to the farmers in team payments. That's a, a, you can't just see a statement like that without appreciating that, well, there's a cost associated with growing cane and delivering cane to the mill, right? And it's the same with this. You can't say Belkogen has earned X amount of revenue without understanding what has been the cost and what actually if it's made a profit or not uh, selling that energy to the grid. Now let's 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 come back to to I mean there's so many different yeah. um, facets of of this issue today, um, and and I want to hone in on the start of the crop. What I hear from you um, repeatedly is that you are prepared to start milling. And that there are cane farmer associations that are prepared to start milling um, to deliver their crop. But let's not confuse one very critical point here, which is the BSCFA is the largest association. They have the largest number of, of cane farmers and they will provide the more than half, I think, uh, the cane needed uh, for, your, for, for this milling season. So how do you move forward without them? Well, um, <clears throat> yes, they, they've got the larger number of farms. I think they, they claim they have uh, 3,000 or so of the 5,200. Um, the, the cane is about 50-50, maybe 51% BSCFA, 49% to the other associations and BSI. So it's it's pretty much split evenly. I, I want to make it very clear. I mean, we want the cane. We, we want farmers to be able to deliver their cane. Um, and at the moment, as I've said, there's no reason why farmers can't deliver their cane, they have a commercial agreement to do so. Um, and, and holding them back just doesn't seem to me to be uh, a legitimate thing to do. Um, you know, uh, for, for many, uh, for particularly during the last, last year, I mean, we heard frequently uh, people complaining about the risk of leaving cane out at the end of the crop and um, how this adversely affects farmers. So um, as, as far as I can see, I, you know, everyone has a right to deliver cane right now. I appreciate that there's uh, discussion that we need to have and we're more than happy to have that discussion I keep emphasizing that but um, you know it's got to be based on 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 reality and and you know the, the situation at the moment and, and to put it into context for viewers I mean we're we, we've lost a considerable amount of money from BSI in the last couple of years so you're, you're looking at a business that hasn't been making money and then you're looking at a client coming and saying but we want another 20 million dollars from you and and you're saying well no we can't do that um, you know, it's just not, it's not, not commercially uh, viable to do that. And, and the last thing we want is for the mill to go out of business because then there won't be a mill and then, you know, nobody will be able to mill their cane. And that makes no sense to anybody. Instead, what we've been doing is putting our money where our mouth is. We've been building value. We've demonstrated that to, to BSCFA and to other farmers, how they earn more money from value added sugars, even after paying a contribution to the production of that sugar. Um, than they would if it was just raw sugar. So, you know, uh, r really, we, we just have to keep this in the realms of reality, not think about the rhetoric and the politics that go behind all of these things. It's, it's really about wh where is the business? What's the best way for the business to move forward? And what impact, uh, you know, will, will anything detrimental to that have for the whole of Belize, not just, not just for cane farmers and millers? So help me understand. <laughs> the agreement comes to an end uh within a few weeks and the bscfa's position is they have a right to renegotiate um is there room for negotiate for negotiation from your end well, Marlene, well i would uh, say Mar uh, yeah, yeah i would just say about marlene that you know we have moved from our original position which was to 
roll over the existing agreement for uh, another seven years, right? In other words, everything stays the same. All we would do would incorporate changes related to the transition to Big Creek, which we had highlighted to the BSAFA would result in savings for farmers of between 1.4 to $2.5 million, right? And that would start from this upcoming 2021-2022 uh, crop. Mm -hmm. uh, they rejected that proposal uh, and seeing that the, the position would not move and at least the impression we had that the concept of net trip value and the sharing of costs was a bone of contention, we went back and said, look, let's let's look at a, at a new revised structure for uh, determining the price of sugar cane that would you know, do away with these sharing of costs to remove uh, a lot of the negativities surrounding it and come up with a new proposal, which is what we did last week. We, we looked at a, a payment structure that would remove a lot of these costs, share the gross values 6 to 40 as proposed by the BSEFA uh, on, the, on the basis that, you know what, it achieves their objective, right, of uh, removing a lot of these uh, sharing of costs, hours of being no worse off, and having a way to be able to start the crop. So we have actually moved from our original position, which was to simply roll over the existing uh, agreement. And we have been discussing with them uh, this new cane payment structure. But and I much like it was at the start of the last agreement, it boils down to payment for bagasse again. It, no, it, no, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it appears we're circling the same topics. Um, some of these things that are being raised are not new. Um, and so we're, we seem to be stepping back instead of moving forward. And as, as Max said, uh, and the, the facts and the figures show it, you know, the farmers are benefiting from the investments being made uh, by BSI to grow value added sugar and now to transition to Big Creek. Last year, as an example, we were able to demonstrate that farmers own, uh, earn about $4.5 million more from the uh, benefits of selling these value-added sugar, which resulted in an improvement in the cane price of three dollars and sixty-one cents. I mean, that that's a big benefit, and that's coming from the existing agreement that we have because it shares in the value of these sugar. So, if we can earn a dollar more uh, for the sugar that we sell, the farmers get sixty-five cents for that, and that's the benefit of this agreement. And that's what we've been saying: that the existing agreement is one that is favorable from our research and investigation. It has one of the more favorable uh, arrangements and farmers are benefiting from it. And this coming crop, it will continue to benefit from it, uh, from the continued growth in value added and also the transition to be great. So help me understand something. Um, you, you, you've noted it quite a bit and I know this is a big part of, of your point as, a, as a, the private sector, that you've invested in quite a bit um, to ease the business ease uh, the flow of the business and to increase um, the value of the product. So you talk of the investment at the Big Creek Port. Um, you've talked about the investment of the water cooler, uh, the water cooling towers. You've talked about the investment into value added, which means it's not just raw sugar going out. You refine it a bit and you're able to sell it, and it, people pay more for it. And you also had other costs like uh, the case. Uh, that you took uh, the Caribbean countries to um, in looking at access to these markets. Those were legal costs. My question is, was the cost of those investments fronted entirely by ASR, BSI, or was part of the cost passed on to farmers? No, the, the whole cost was fronted by, by uh, BSI. Um, and uh, essentially, um, uh, you know, remember when we first came in, and I'll just take us all back a few years now, I mean, the four or five years before ASR became involved with BSI, you know, the industry really was slipping down a slippery slope. And uh, uh, the average uh, amount of cane it was milling was about a million tons, and that was falling year by year. Uh, the industry had serious debts. Uh, when ASR came in, um, we fixed up those debts and we invested heavily, first of all, in the mill before we did anything else about, um, you know, the, 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 the value added sugar, etc. I mean, we, we improved greatly the mill throughput. Um, you don't hear about this very much, but these are facts. So in the, in the five years after we took over, you know, we were milling more like, what, you know, 1, 1.26, 1.27 million tons of, of cane. So we pushed the throughput from 5,000 tons a day to, to more like 6,700 
tons a day. Um, and all of that benefits the farmer. So aside from the, 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 more, the, the latter investments, but all of those investments uh, have to be paid for from our 35% uh, of, of the revenue share. Um, there are some contributions as part of the net strip value, for example, um, the, the operational uh, costs of, of logistics and, and freight are shared uh, and there is a manufacturing allowance uh, to help with the cost of um, of producing value-added sugars. Now that cost that goes to farmers is nowhere near the real cost. It's, it's, a, it's a much smaller amount that's passed to them but beyond that cost they still earn a lot more from the production of value-added sugars than if we were simply selling raw sugar. So, you know, we're, we're doing a lot to grow the pie, as I said. Um, and yeah, it's, it's important to note that the $300 million uh, we've invested uh, in, in the industry has really been not, not just to smooth the industry, it's been to enable the industry to survive. Because frankly, without that investment, I don't think we'd be sitting here talking about this subject today. It's, is there, do you feel as if the requests being made by the association of course to increase what they receive what farmers receive you think it's a reasonable request if circumstances were to be different um no i don't think so because i, I think to be honest the, the value share agreement that, that they have as, as sean said is is one, is one of the most favorable in, in in the region and and um and it's it's good for everybody because it's a value share so they get to share in the investments we're making and the improvements we're making um i think as i said you know we're looking at a nine percent increase in the cane price estimate first estimate price estimate this year compared to last year and i think that speaks volumes for the direction that we're moving in and I think another real focus that should take place is, is how to improve efficiencies in the cane farm itself. Uh, at the moment, the, the yields in Belize are the lowest in the region, the, cane, the sugar cane yields, and the cost of producing, harvesting, delivering that cane are the highest. Now, that's one area I think farmers can, you know, really take a long, hard look at, because can you imagine if you're reducing those costs dramatically, how much more viable your, your individual industry as a cane farmer will become? Um, but in fact, over the time, we've been doing a lot of this investment, including through fair trade uh, provision for farmers via Tate and Lyle sugars. You know, we've actually seen yields decrease, not not increase. So, I, I, you know, to, this has to be joined up. I mean, everyone talks about it being joined up at the hip, but it really does have to be. I mean, you can put all the investments in the mill, but you still need to be um, improving efficiencies in the cane farm so the whole business can move forward. I mean, that's really important. Um, otherwise, it would always be a case of farmers saying, we want more, we want more um, from a business that can't afford to do that. And that just means in the end that there is no business uh, at, at the end of the day. So it's pure, pure economics, pure, pure commercial stuff. Every sugar industry has to deal with these issues. And, and, um, and, and we hope that common sense will prevail and that, you know, farmers will have the opportunity, uh, you know, to, to, to move forward with us. Well, if there's any indication from the negotiation of the last agreement, you know, uh, that the farmers don't go quietly into the night, they will um, continue to push. And one of the things that we know, um, I, I'm sure you'll appreciate, is this is such, um, the relationship is symbiotic. You need the cane farmers and the cane farmers need the mill. Um, and it's absolutely crucial that there is some agreement made by both parties to be able to move forward. Um, what is the proposed way forward from your end at this point? Well, we want to continue to meet with BSCFA on, on the basis, uh, you know, we're, we're working out the, the, the revised um, terms of that legal agreement in, in uh, you know, in, in form of a, uh, an amended commercial agreement. We'll be sending that to the BSCFA. We want to sit down and talk to them about that. Yeah. Uh, we're more than happy to explain the situation again on, on Bagas and these other issues and, and where we are um, and, and to explain where we want to take the industry. And I think that's probably the best, best place to start. A, a lot comes down to whether there's, there's good faith in, in moving forward with this or, or whether, uh, you know, one side just, just basically wants to get more value from the other and, and, uh, and, and isn't prepared to listen to, to the rationale of why growing the pie collectively is a better way of moving forward. I mean, that that obviously could be complicated, but we don't think it should be. Um, but if that is the case, I mean, it, it wouldn't really make any difference if you had a, 
an interim agreement uh, that nothing nothing would be resolved and you would go and take this problem on to the next crop. This is exactly what happened in 2014, 2015 okay. with Bagas. And, and we just don't think the industry can afford to be there because that really interrupts investment. It interrupts the ability for, for us as a business to move forward. Uh, and obviously that has a negative impact on, on the cane farmers and on the rest of the country who, who benefit from the revenues that, that the industry produces and the electricity we produce. So from what I'm hearing from you, uh, a few issues here. So one, um, interim, an interim agreement uh, isn't favorable because, as you pointed out, um, it would mean that next year we would be in the same place talking about uh, hammering out details for the agreement. Um, secondly, you have adjusted your position um, from the current agreement of 35% uh, going towards the Millers and the remainder going towards the um, farmers to 60-40 now uh, as the new um, proposed way forward and that you do not um, foresee that there can be an increase in payment for bagasse to the farmers. Is that kind of where you are today? I, yeah, sure. I think that, that's, uh, that pretty much sums up uh, the, the position, Marlene, that we're certainly prepared to look at the simplified a more simplified way of paying for cane that removes uh, a lot of these shared costs where we move to gross value, uh, but we simply can't pay more uh, for bagage. And, and we've explained all the reasons why. And as Max said, we're happy to go over these points once more, offer again our financial statements uh, to the uh, BSEF here for their review um, and see if we can come to uh, a mutually beneficial um, agreement. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what we want. We, we want to uh, continue uh, to invest in this industry to grow the pie. Uh, we believe that that has far greater benefits uh, to farmers at the end of the day because, in a sense, we're doing it together, right? But we can't. We can't. What we can't afford to do is see how we divide the pie uh, so that one side gets a bit more than the other. The objective we should really be about growing the pie, increasing revenues, and certainly on our end working with the farmers to see how we could help uh, to make their farming costs uh, a bit lower. What's the amount of time you have before the crop absolutely needs to be started? Well, it, it needed to start yesterday because we have, as everybody has been pointing out, we're expecting uh, uh, more cane uh, compared to last year. Uh, and so we know that last year we went into July because of uh, weather. The weather is very unpredictable. So right now it's looking good. Uh, you know, the weather forecaster, um, you know, highlighted uh, a cold front that will come dry. That's good. That will help uh, dry up the fields. So in terms of what I've seen in previous years, this is one of the best sort of climate we've seen for starting crop, right? So we should have started yesterday to avoid having to go into the rainy season because when we go into the rainy season, it just makes the harvest and delivery and the milling of cane very, very difficult. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard the Prime Minister's comments saying that, in fact, it is not the ideal time to, to start due yeah. to the weather and road conditions. Well, you know, roads certainly uh, are a, a situation that, you know, are not within the control of, of stakeholders. We do depend on government uh, to get those done. But in our experience, farmers are resilient. Uh, they find a way to get their cane. And as I said, in, in my experience here, I've seen uh, crop starts uh, under far worse uh, circumstances. All right, so what is the plan of action today? Do you attempt, I know you've said uh, that your legal team has written to the Sugar Industry Control Board. Will you attempt to uh, meet with BSCFA once again, perhaps? seek government for intervention? What's what's your course of action? Look, I mean, we're, we're happy to meet with anybody to, to you know, to, to take this thing forward. I mean, that's that's always been our position. Um, you know, that this is this is an important industry to the whole of the country. Um, and, you know, I, I think uh, we, we, we do need to move forward. I mean, obviously, we need to move forward. So as I said, you know, we're, we're sending um, some ideas uh, in, in you know again in written form to BSCFA. I hope they'll be receptive to that 
Um, and uh, But in the meantime, I, I think we should get on with the crop. I, I think it's not in anyone's interest. It clearly isn't in anyone's interest not, not to have a crop. Uh, the, the, to be honest, as Sean said, the weather is, is fine. There's, there's not really an issue there. It, it's rained a little bit, but you know, it, it rains during the whole crop. Um, but, but in essence, uh, you were mentioning with the, the, your weather report earlier, for us, you know, the cold front is a great thing because uh, for sugar cane, it, it's um, when it gets cold at night, it stores the sucrose in the cane um, and it gives, gives a better, better poll when, when that cane is delivered. So, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very much, uh, um, um, uh, it, it's very much a, uh, uh, a good time, I think, to start the crop. So we wanted, to, we wanted to get on with that. So well, let's, you know, let's see what, what develops. I'm hoping that um, there'll be some communication and discussion. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this update this morning. And of course, we wish you the very best uh, for the Christmas season and the sugar season that's coming up. Stay safe. Thank, thank you, Marlene. Thank, thank you. Merry Christmas. All right. Appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And as we said, Paul, so this year we are uh, looking at some of our adopted cultures here in Belize and uh, what their favorite Christmas treats are. And today we have uh, the owner of Shekhar Indian Restaurant who will be joining us talking about Christmas treats. That's coming up in a few. Thank you.